Remember, Jennifer, your cousin Jeff is coming on the 3 o'clock bus. Please tell him we're sorry we couldn't be here, but the Kellys are desperate for help with their new cold. Gus will be here, and you know how to reach us. Now, don't forget to be out there to meet Jeff. Jennifer, did you hear me? I won't forget. Bye now. Bye-bye, hon. Bye, Mom. I guess I'll mostly miss all my friends. And it's kind of boring on the farm. Cheer up. I'm sure you're going to have fun. Ask Jeff if his chess game has improved since last September. Now we can play on the micro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the winner, Gus. Hiya, Jeff. Hello, Jennifer. What's new? Oh, a lot. Mom and Dad bought two microcomputers. Two microcomputers? Yeah, to help run things around the farm. To help? How do microcomputers help around a farm? Well, first of all, a micro, or small, computer is just another machine. A special type of electronic machine that works with information, like numbers. They should have saved their money and bought a cheap adding machine. Oh, it's better than an adding machine. It can do math, read and remember words and numbers, show pictures and move them around, multiply and divide, and it can combine, change, and compare information. We call information data. I don't need a dumb machine to do those things. Well, I can add and subtract, multiply and divide, too. And read words and compare information. Data. Well, maybe, but a computer is a lot faster than any human. It can remember figures a long time and recall them just about instantly. And it doesn't have to be told what to do every second. It could do more arithmetic in an hour than I could do with a pencil and paper in a whole lifetime with no mistakes. Okay, okay. But how does it help around the farm? And why do you need two of them? My folks use one for business records, billing their customers, figuring taxes, paying the bills, ordering supplies, keeping inventory. It's small and saves us enough money that we can afford another one to run pumps, fans, lights, fire alarms, and switches out in the barn. It also checks the locks and keeps track of all the electricity we use all day and all night. I even get to use the first one for homework, writing letters, and playing neat games with my parents and friends. That's why these microcomputers are also called personal computers. Hmm. A personal helper. And they don't cost a fortune? Some are very inexpensive, and they make smaller versions all the time. Now that's interesting. Do you think you could teach me to use one? Sure. If you want to learn computers, then just sing this song along with me. They can help you with your homework, and they're hardly ever wrong, you what? see. What? Never? Can I learn to work them now? With just some simple rules. With a little practice, you'll soon find they're handy tools. Tell me about computers, please don't leave out anything I've got to know. Would you like to be a pal and take the time with me to show how to get the thing to handle even one command? Or multiplying numbers, I just have to understand. teach you what I've learned at home and at school. And I can show you some of the things that we use our computers for in the house and the barn. Will I get to use one? Yeah. Let's go up and take a look now. We interrupt this with a news bulletin. The Middletown Bank has been robbed. Robbed? Yes, robbed by a masked gunman with broad shoulders wearing a powder blue jumpsuit, last seen driving a sporty red car with license plate starting with the letters B.R. We now return to the musical portion. Hmm, the police could use a computer to help catch that robber. It can even catch crooks? Yeah, if they figure out how fast and how long the crook's been driving, they could get an idea how far away. The computer's going to figure out where the crook is just from that? No, the computer will give some useful data very quickly. Right, that instant recall you mentioned. 
So the police can use the computer's data along with the human judgment. People do the thinking, huh? Yep. I'll have to trade cars with someone so the police won't spot me. Maybe one of these farms. This is it? How does that little box do all those things? There are several parts of the computer that work together to do everything. Input devices to let you put in data, central processing unit, the brain, memory for storage, communication lines, known as buses, and finally, output to let you see the computer's results. Here, the keyboard is for input, see? When you type, the computer changes what you type into coded signals and sends the codes to the central processing unit. That's the part that makes decisions? Mm-hmm. Inside the computer, there are a lot of very special parts called chips. A processing chip can work with data. Do things like, oh, compare two pieces of data or add or subtract. Other chips are made to be memory chips. These keep track of all the information the computer uses. Each piece of the information is stored in its own place in the computer's memory chips. Well, how does the information get around? Along communication lines. Special circuits that let all the parts send signals back and forth. Ah, that's why they're called buses. <laughs> you got it. On this one, the screen shows the output, right? Mm hmm? And it can also send it over here to the printer, if you want the data recorded on paper. It's like a tiny railroad switching yard. The boxcars carry data around, but the tracks can send the cars different places, mm -hmm. where they can unload, pick up new data, and then go somewhere else. Mm, something like that. You said this computer actually works a lot of things out in the barn? Yeah. Dad wanted to have a computer control the lights and the fire extinguishers and the fans and pumps, some locks and alarms. But the computer is here in the house. Connected to the barn through the telephone lines. Oh, yeah. It's a lot easier for us to have the computer here inside the house. Maybe if I could see the things in the barn, it would make a lot more sense. Oh, okay. Let's go. The computer reads a dial out here, then sends a signal through the phone wires mm -hmm. if some change is needed? Right. Let's say Gus closes a door in the barn. The computer lets us know if it's locked. Or if a cow gets loose and knocks open a stall, the computer can flash a signal or something inside the house. You mean that computer is running all the time? Yeah. It never gets tired as long as we have electricity. Electricity? Yeah. See, the signals travel between the computer and the switches in the barn at the speed of light. Yeah. Electricity. And inside the computer, too. And even though it takes a long set of instructions, a program, each step is very simple and takes only a few millionths of a second. I see. The computer just takes a little tiny split second to check the whole program. Are there things here that the computer controls? Are those part of the sprinkler system? Yeah. The pipes with the little round thing, and that flashing smoke detector is connected to the computer, too. In a fire, the nozzles would spray foam, the stalls open up to let the cows out, and the computer sends an alarm to the fire station. Huh? How's that? Well, it's hooked into the telephone lines, remember? Yeah. You can use it to call other places? Uh-huh. We can trade information with other people who have their computers connected into the telephone system. That sounds like a good way to get a lot more out of your computer. Oh, Jeff, I need a break. No way. Couldn't we try some of those computer games you were talking about? Okay. That was fun. You really expect me to believe all that information is stored inside the computer? In a very simple code. The computer uses electricity, remember? 
Yes. It uses high and low electrical charges for the code to represent ones and zeros. That's all? Ones and zeros? How do you get all the different symbols just using ones and zeros? Just like we put letters together to make words, the computer puts together strings of ones and zeros to make larger codes. Each zero or one is the smallest piece of information the computer uses. It's called a bit. Put the bits together in a string. A microcomputer makes and uses groups of eight bits. Each one is called a byte. That would be like always spelling every word in English with eight letters? Yeah, computer words, bytes. Each have exactly eight bits. The computer uses a different byte for each letter, each number, each punctuation mark or special symbol, like a dollar sign or percent sign. Say, I don't have to keep track of all those codes, do I? Right. The computer does all that. We can talk to it in a language that looks a lot like English. Also, each computer has a set of built-in commands that save time. You can learn all about that from this book. A user's manual. Uh-huh. One comes with each computer, telling you how to use the command. I get it. Different computers sometimes need very different kinds of instructions. Mm hmm Hmm. The police could use a system like this. Have a bunch of license numbers, car descriptions. Yeah. And you just ask the computer to go through all those and come up with a name. Ah, but only if you give it the right instructions. I think I could catch on to those instructions if we could work with that barn program a little. Oh, okay. Ah, this could be the place. I'll see if I can sweet-talk these folks into loaning me a car. One the police won't be looking for. You said this thing was smart. I typed the instructions like the manual said. The command run is supposed to make it run. But it isn't running. Uh, you typed R-U-M. It should be R-U-N. But M is close enough for me to understand. It can only follow exact instructions. Okay. I'm typing R-U-N. Ah, it's working. You really do have to hit the right keys. <gasps> Who's that? Can I help you? Wow, that's some car. Yeah, look at that. Do you know her? No. No, it can't be. It is. Jeff, can you make out the license? BRX279. Didn't the radio say the getaway car from that bank job had a license starting with... Yes, dearies, and I know you're much too smart to go yelling out the window to warn your parents about a little old bank robber who just needs to borrow their car for a while. Just keep on playing with your little toy here and nothing bad will happen to anybody, okay? Okay. <laughs> Or do this? We gotta get help from someone, somehow. That's it. What? We'll use the computer. You go to the window. Tell me what you see. Okay. Little toy, huh? Great. You're doing that with the computer. Can you make the light signal SOS? I'm trying. Hey, who's out in the barn? You, upstairs. Who's out there? Jennifer. Get away from the computer. All right, you'd better tell me who's out messing with the lights in the barn. Um, it must be, uh, the electrician. He comes around once a month to check things out. Well, he's going to get himself checked out now. You were great. Look, can we lock her out of the house or something? We've got to trap her in the barn so she can't hurt anyone. Okay, the computer will tell us when the doors or locks are closed. That tells us where she is. There. That shows she's opening the big door. It's closed. She's inside. Okay, come on out. I'm unlocking the pump room door and turning on the pump. I said, come out or else. See? That means she's opening the pump room door. That puts her right by the main fire extinguisher unit. If she's turned on the light, she has to be inside the pump room. And now, she's locked in. And here comes the fire department. What is going on here? Looks like your kids just caught our bank robber. Huh? huh? 
with a lot of help from the computer. Jeff, I think this one's gonna be tough to explain. Yep, you handle it. <laughs> 